in the previous part, we had a look at variables, attributes, and inputs. In this part, we're going to take a look at channels and a few basic functions. So let's dive in. Before we dive into channels, let's take a quick look at how ptNum and primNum differ depending what you're running over. So on this triangle here, I'm running over points and I've got ptNum and primNum. So ptNum is our point number. And as you can see here, I've got int pt is point number and that lines up perfectly. I've got primNum, which is our primitive number. And you can see here, it gives me that. What I've also done is I've created an array, which is all the prims that that point is connected to. And you can see here that when I use uh. at primNum, it gives me just the first primitive that that point is connected to. So that's how primNum and ptNum work on points. Let's go ahead and take up primitives. So you can see here, uh, primNum, lines up perfectly with our primitive number and then pt num gives us the first point per prim so this array here is all of the points that that prim is connected to and at pt num gives us that first point if we look at detail you can see how it's negative one for both and that's because details don't have point numbers or prim numbers it's just running over the geometry as a whole. So it doesn't store these, which is why it gives us negative one. And then finally, let's take a look at vertices. So you can see here, I've got primNum. And what that does is I've also used the function vertex prim. And the function vertex prim gives us the primitive number that that vertex is attached to. And you can see that they're both identical, both the primitive and the vertex prim result. So we could use either at primNum or at vertex prim and then using that function there. And the same for pt. You know, our pt num and vertex point gives us exactly the same result. So that's how pt num and primNum vary depending what you're running over. So now let's take a look at channels. So let's create a new wrangle. And it doesn't matter what I'm running over, so I'm just going to run over points in this case. So we had a look at variable types and attribute types previously. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through each channel for those. So let's do integer first. I at I1. And we create a channel. And we want a channel integer. So it's CHI. And this will give us an integer. And then here is what we call that channel. So I'm going to call this input int, and let's semicolon that. Then we're going to click on this little one here, which creates the parameters. And you can see we've got our input integer. So if we look at our points, i1, if I change this input, it's changing it for all the points. We can do the same for floats. So f at for float. And we can just use ch for this, just a channel. Input float. Let's hit that. And we've got our input float. And you can see how that's working. For vectors, we use chv for channel vector. That's what we need. And you can see one two, three, and then finally string. So S at S1, that was CHS for channel string. There we go, we've got our input string. Hello world. There are a few other channel inputs we can use, such as a channel ramp. So, it gives us a float out. So I'm going to use float at R1 with channel ramp. And it's called input ramp. And now for ramps, we need to give it a position value. Now in this case, uh, I don't have a position value. 
So I'm going to create a position value real quickly, call it position, and I'm just going to give it a random number. So random creates a random number between 0 and 1. And that's great because our ramp takes an input position from 0 to 1. So channel ramp is called input ramp, and I'm going to use the position as our input. Let's take a look at that. And you can see here we've got our input ramp. And if I take a quick look at R1, this is what I give. So as I edit the ramp, you can see how those values are changing. So if our position value is zero, it will take zero and give me back zero. If our position value is one, it will give me one and go up here. And if my position, the random number becomes at 0 0.6, it will look at 0 0.6 on this ramp, which is here, and it will give me this value, which is about 0 0.74. So that's how our channel ramp works. What I can also do is go uh, V at R2. Let's create another channel ramp. And again, let's use the pause position. And this time, if I go onto this cog here and go edit parameter interface, I can select my input color ramp and I can change it from float to color. Let's hit accept. And now I've got a color ramp. So I can go ahead, I can make this red. Go here, I can make this say blue. And I could go here and make this green. And finally, this one white. So whatever our random position gives us, it's going to sample that position along this ramp and go, okay, if I if my position is 0 0.28, it's going to give me red. If it's somewhere in the middle, it's going to give me kind of purpley color. So that's how we can use these channels, uh, channel I for integer, ch for floats, ch v for vectors, ch s for strings, and then channel ramps to create attributes or variables. We can do it as a variable as well. Float f2 equals channel float2. Still works for, for variables. Again, we don't see it in our geometry spreadsheet because it's a variable and not an attribute. But that's how we can use these channels to bring in data from outside into our wrangle. Let's take a quick look at how we can use these channels and a function inside our wrangles to control certain attributes. So I'm going to drop down another sphere. Let's call it a polygon. And let's give it a bit more frequency so we've got a bit more points to work with. And let's create ourselves a wrangle. So the first thing I want to do is create a float. And uh, when we're working in VEX and in code, we should generally use names that make sense. So we know what we're working with. So I'm going to call this random value. And I'm just going to call it rand at ptnum. So my variable called rand value is a random number between 0 and 1. So if I create f at value, and let's assign it random value. So I'm going to create a float called random value, pick a number between 0 and 1, and then I'm going to assign that to an attribute called value. So you can see here, here's our random value, and it goes from 0 to 1. So how can I use channels to edit this value? Well, I'm going to go ahead and grab a vector, and I'm going to grab a vector 2. So it's only got a 0 and a 1, not a 0, 1, 2. So vector 2, I'm going to call this limits. And to bring that in as a channel, it's chu. And I'm going to call this random limits. So let's take a look at that. So I've got two random limits here. 
So let's go from 0 to 1 at the moment. Now I can use a function called fit or fit 0 and 1. So what's the difference? Well, let's call this fitted value and let's take a look. So our first function, let's have a look at it as fit. So if I type fit and then hit the bracket, you can see it's going to give me a bit of information about how this fit works. So in our case, it takes an input value, it takes then a minimum and then a maximum, and then an output minimum and maximum. So what's my input value? Well, my input value is random value. And now the minimum. So what's the minimum value coming in? Well, it's zero. And what's the maximum value coming in? Well, it's one. Now, what do I want to fit it to? Well, in my case, I want to fit it to limits.x as I want to take the first value of limits. And what's the maximum value I want to fit it to? Well, I want to fit it to limits.y. Let's close bracket and semicolon. So we always put a semicolon at the end of every line to tell the wrangle that's the end of this line. So now let's set the value to be fitted value. And you can see nothing is changing. And why is that? Because we're fitting it from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. Now if I now make this 10, it's going to take the value 0 to 1 and fit it from 0 to 10. And you can see how all our values changed. So random limits, if I set this 0 to 100, you can see that. I could say random limits, say 10 to 100. So any value that is random of 0 now becomes 10. And any random value that's 1 becomes 100. Now instead of using fit, we can also use an expression fit 0, 1. And what this does is it assumes this value coming in is between 0 and 1 already. So I can just go ahead and delete that part. So it's going to take random value 0 to 1, fit 0 to limits.x, and fit 1 to limits.y. So you can now see how using this random and using this channel, I can then get an output expression, an output attribute using these expressions. So random limits, let's say it goes from negative 1 to 1. So now you can see my values here go almost to negative one because the random is giving us between naught and one and it goes almost to naught. So if I create more points here, so we've got a lot more points, you can see how it goes still almost to negative one and then on the other end, almost to one. So that is how we can use some expressions and channels to give us a value based on what the user can input. I hope you found that useful. We had a quick look at how ptNum and primNum changes depending what you're running over. Had a look at creating channels to read in data from outside of the wrangle and a few basic functions. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.